Physical strength is a great asset for any climber. As much as I favor technique for precisely getting through a climb, being strong can make moves more efficient, offer you more options, and come in very handy for those moments you're far from perfect. Having done a bit of gymnastic strength training in the years prior to climbing, I found that a lot of my strength transferred to the sport quite naturally. This video will go over some of the most effective exercises for developing the upper body for climbing. We'll separate them into two categories, push for the antagonist muscles and pull for the agonist. Push-ups are your most basic climber antagonist exercise. It works the chest, interior shoulders, triceps, and core. Focus on performing with quality and control before racing off to increase repetitions. Key things to note include keeping your elbows in and maintaining a flat line across the body. Work your way up to three sets of 15 repetitions with one minute rests. Once you're comfortable with regular push-ups, you can transition to the rings for an added challenge. Rings offer less stability and a deeper range of motion to create a more difficult push-up. If you've never done them before, prepare to be surprised. Find a box or bench to elevate the feet in line with the base of the rings and perform the push-ups with the same form as on the floor. Work up to three sets of 10 repetitions with one minute rests. Dips are the next progression in the push series as you are now pushing the entirety of your body weight. This can be a tricky transition and may expose some deficiencies in mobility of the shoulders. We'll start on the dip bars. If you're having difficulty, I suggest starting with a shorter range of motion and gradually working your weight deeper into the movement. Perform the dip with a slight forward lean. Drop your chest forward until your rear deltoids are in line with your elbows. Work up to three sets of 12 repetitions with one minute rests. As with the push-ups, rings will provide the added challenge of instability to the movement of the dip. Your key focus here should be positioning the elbows tightly against your sides and locking out the arms in top position. Again, prepare to be surprised with the upgrade in difficulty. Work up to three sets of eight repetitions with one minute rests. The planche is one of my favorite gymnastics-based exercises. It's a simple static hold that is difficult to do and gives you immense gains. The isometric nature of the movement means that your muscles are under contraction the whole time. You're essentially doing one powerful rep. There are three progressions to the tuck planche. First, start by focusing on protracting the scapula and pushing the floor away. This is similar to the top position of a dip. Tuck your knees into your chest so that your feet are off the ground. Second, start adding a forward lean while keeping your arms straight. Your knees will naturally travel back to counterbalance. Keep them tucked in and your feet will elevate a bit farther from the ground. The last step involves elevating the hips and flattening out the back. This requires a movement called anterior pelvic tilts, a tilting of the pelvis forward while arching your lower back. Lean forward over your shoulders even more to provide space for your hips to counterbalance. Work your way up to three sets of 15 second holds with one minute rests through each progression. This last exercise gives you a full value antagonist workout and is my personal favorite to use with the climbing team. It works the shoulders, chest, and core in a sequence of sustained pushing movements under tension. As climbers, we spend a lot of time under scapular depression. This is the lowering of the shoulder blades to initiate a pull. Handstands work the opposite movement, called scapular elevation. This is the raising of the shoulder blades, done when actively pushing the floor away in a handstand. 
Start this drill in a push-up position with both feet slightly off the floor and pressing against the wall. You'll want to be either barefoot or in shoes to maximize friction. From here, walk your chest towards the wall while simultaneously moving the feet up. As your body becomes more inverted, remember to keep those shoulder blades elevated by actively pushing the floor away. Once your hands are close enough to the wall, you can complete the handstand by gently headbutting the wall. From here, walk back out to the push-up position while moving your feet down the wall. Make sure not to touch the floor with either foot. Once you've returned to the original position, you've completed one rep. This can be a very challenging exercise to learn, especially if you've never been in a handstand before. Walk your hands to the wall only to a distance you're comfortable with until you get the hang of it. Work your way up to three sets of three repetitions with two minute rests. Rows are a great starting point to work your pull, and it's also a good scaling tool for learning the pull-up. Make sure the rings are low enough so that your body can be as flat to the ground as possible. You can also elevate your feet on a box or bench. When doing rows, make sure to fully retract the scapula at the top of the movement. Keep the elbows in and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Work up to three sets of 12 reps with one minute rests. Another scaling tool for the pull-up is doing negatives. Find either a low bar or a higher bar with something to stand on. Set your pull-up grip, jump up to the end position and hold for a few seconds. Slowly lower yourself down until you've reached a full hang. The entire movement should take at least 5 seconds to complete. Set your feet again and repeat. Work your way up to 3 sets of 5 repetitions with 1.5 minute rests. Pull-ups are your foundation for pulling strength and movement. When done correctly, it tests your ability to move your shoulder blades in the optimal position and fully engage your lats. If you'd like an extensive walkthrough of the pull-up, you can watch my video, Perfecting the Pull, here. Work your way up to three sets of eight repetitions with one minute rests. Another movement taken from gymnastics training, Skin the Cat is the best shoulder mobility exercise I know. The entire move takes you through a full range of scapular positions, from retraction to protraction, elevation to depression. It's also an essential scaling tool for more advanced movements such as the front and back levers. To get a full tutorial of Skin the Cat, you can watch my video here. Work your way up to three sets of three repetitions with one minute rests. Pegboards are one of the best tools used by athletes for training lock-off strength, core tension, and precision. If you find access to a pegboard, you can use these exercises for a fun and unique challenge. Those new to the pegboard should start with the first progression, moving one row, then matching. Begin by depressing the shoulder blade and bending the arm slightly. Hold until you've moved the peg into the next hole. Repeat with the other arm while you bring the second peg to match the height of the first. Go up four rows and then begin your down climb, making sure to lock off your position when lowering each peg. Work up to two sets of four rows up and down with two minute rests. Make sure to perform the second set by leading with the other hand. Your second progression now includes alternating rows instead of matching. With each movement of the peg, you're now skipping one row. Work up to two sets of six rows up and down with two minute rests. Make sure to perform the second set by leading with the other hand. The final progression is alternating two rows instead of one. This will be a full test of your lock-off ability. Work up to two sets all the way up to the top of the pegboard and down with two minute rests. You should be getting three pulls with each arm. Make sure to perform the second set by leading with the other hand. Our last exercise is the rope climb, an alternative to the pegboard and a measure of raw pulling power. Believe it or not, the rope climb was actually a gymnastics event featured in the Olympics back in the late 19th century. This is the hands-only version where you're not allowed to use your feet to assist with the climbing. I prefer to keep my legs straddled and piked with the rope between them. Those newer to this apparatus should start in the first progression. 
Begin by standing next to the rope while setting up the hands. Once your grips are in place, perform a total of 4 pulls upward and then 4 negative pulls downward. Make sure your elbows are tight and in for the down climb. Do this for 3 sets with 1 minute rests. The second progression increases to 6 pulls up and 6 pulls down. You can begin lower in a squat position before initiating the climb. Do this for 3 sets with 1 minute rests. The final progression is 8 up and 8 down, or however many you can do to reach the height allowed at your gym. It's best to start in a sit start to maximize your pull count. Do this for 3 sets with 1 minute rests. When it comes to strengthening the upper body, there are a lot of different exercises to choose from. The ones I selected for this video are what I consider to be the most scalable, easiest to learn, and offer the best returns. I hope you found the content helpful, and until next time, move better, climb harder.